Welcome to today's lesson on Bollinger Bands. My name is Chris Capri. I'm the founder of Second Skies. And today we're going to be talking about Bollinger Bands, their construction, and how we can use them to improve our trading. The Bollinger Bands were first developed in 1980 by John Bollinger. The main purpose or design of the Bollinger Band was to give the market an overall sense of what environment we're in, particularly whether we are ranging, trending, or about to break out of a range. If we're in a ranging environment, then the bands can act as support and resistance and give us a relative measure of the high and lows for that particular range. As we look into the Bollinger Bands, we'll see a chart of them in just a moment here, but they are composed of two lines, one above and one below the pair's price action. They measure two standard deviations of the price action in relationship to the highs and lows for that particular pair over any time period, whether it's a 30-minute chart, one-hour chart, or a daily chart. Taking a look at an actual chart here, we're looking at a pair of the, can the blue and red candles here are the pair's price action, and the yellow lines represent the bands here. This is the upper Bollinger Band here, and this part is the lower Bollinger Band. Now, the general mathematical construction of the Bollinger Bands is they are based upon statistics. What they really are using is the standard bell curve in measuring standard deviations for a pair's price action. Now, let's ask ourselves why and how this is as important. 75% of your, approximately 75% of your, all pairs oscillate between lows and highs or relative floors and ceilings. It's because the order books aren't generally skewed to one side or the other to overwhelmingly push the pair either to the upside or the downside. Therefore, the pair should range within a relative high and a low. If we're using two standard deviations, two standard deviations mathematically measure approximately 95% of all price action. Therefore, if the bands are measuring two standard deviations, then if a pair is outside of that 95 percentile, aka the 96, 97, or 98 percentile, or above, then the volume or order flow has to be heavily skewed in one particular direction to do that. This is very powerful for us to understand or know when this is happening. It also gives us a clear idea whether we are in a range or not, or whether we're going to break out of the range. Therefore, we don't trade reversal strategies when the pair is going to break out or trend to the upside or downside. It also gives us clues into market volume or volatility and relative volume, some information we don't have access to. By showing with the bands are contracted horizontal, that means the order books aren't heavily skewed. There's no real winner between the buyers and sellers. But when the bands are expanding massively, then it's clearly obvious that either the buyers or sellers are in control. Contracting versus expanding, very important to understand these two key environments for Bollinger Bands. If they're contracting, there really isn't enough volume or volatility, as mentioned before, to push the pair in one particular direction or the other. Therefore, we should probably be trading reversal or range-bound strategies. If they get really tight or contracted, then that means there's very low volume for a particular pair. And we can expect a breakout to happen because when we're in a period of very low volume, when huge amounts of capital come in, they overwhelm the other side, either the buyers or sellers, and heavily push the pair in one particular direction or another. Now, when they're expanding, that means the volume or order flow is increasing or accelerating towards one side or the other, either the bulls or the bears. And this will heavily push the pair in one particular direction, giving us a clue as to market direction and where we want to trade the pair. Since the bands measure approximately 95% of all price action, it must take a lot of volume by default to push the pair into the 96, 97, 98, and 99th percentile, therefore giving us clues as to where we want to be with the pair. Now, the general mathematics, it's not important that you understand them completely, but just to understand them in basic, simple terms, the upper Bollinger Band is the equivalent to the middle Bollinger Band, which is a 20-period moving average plus two standard deviations placed above the price action. The lower Bollinger Band is just the opposite. It takes a 20-period moving average, it uh, takes it times two standard deviations, and subtracts that and places that below the price action. Now, how do we use Bollinger Bands? Since they are an RBI or a range-bound indicator, we want the bands to be relatively horizontal and consistent. If they're horizontal and consistent, the pair should oscillate between a floor and a ceiling because they're containing 95% of all price action. And when they do that, they're going to give us a sort of highlight to the relative highs and lows for the pair, therefore showing us clear places where we can buy and sell the pair, or relative tops and bottoms. Taking a look at a chart here, we can see a couple periods of contraction right here and right here, where the pair 
was oscillating between a floor and a ceiling, and the bands contained them very, very well, giving us a great buy and a great sell opportunity on this pair. But when the pair started to expand, either in this case or in this case, we wouldn't want a reversal trading strategy. We want to trade in the direction of that move. Or if we were looking to possibly sell, we could realize with the bands expanding, we do not want to sell here. Or if we had bought down here, we can realize we can stay in the move longer because the bands are expanding to the upside, telling us that a continuation in one direction should happen. The general strategies for trading the Bollinger Bands are relatively simple. If the bands look set to hold a relative range and the bands are moving horizontal, then the general strategy is to short at the range high, the top of the bands, and to buy or long at the range low, at the bottom of the bands. The one thing we want to make sure with this strategy is that we are, the bands are not expanding by any means. Another strategy to trade the bands is if there is a strong contraction in the bands. Like people, pairs do not like to be contained within very small spaces. So as a pair gets caught up in a very small space, that means there's general low volume. And when you have a very, uh, a very long period of low volume, when large amounts of capital comes in, they overwhelm the one side and have pretty much free reign to push the pair in one particular direction or another. Since pairs cannot contain these small ranges for long periods of time, a breakout is, event is eventually going to happen. And therefore, when they contract to a very abnormal level, we should be queuing into that, expecting a breakout to happen soon, and looking to be potentially trading that breakout. Let's take a look at an example here. Here, a pair is caught for over a month and a half within a very tight period here, a very small contraction on the bands. And the pair actually gets smaller and smaller. The bands get smaller and smaller. This is a very uh, long period of low volume. Pairs cannot contain these periods for long periods of time. Eventually, a huge amount of capital comes in. The pair breaks out. And when it does, it's a very strong move. This right here, from here to here, is an 1,100 pip move. So it shows you how when pairs contract for long periods of time, we can expect an eventual breakout and trade those breakouts in the direction of the bands. A very powerful trading method. In conclusion, or summarize it up here, the Bollinger Bands are excellent providing us with lots of information, particularly regarding environment, whether we're trending or range bound. We want to make sure that we're using the correct strategy to the, for the correct environment. We don't want to try a trending strategy when we're in a range bound environment. They give us relative ideas as to volume and volatility, some information we don't have access to in the Forex market. By telling us if the pair is contracted and the bands are contracted, there isn't overwhelming amounts of volume in one particular direction. But when they're expanding, it's heavy volume in one particular direction, and we want to trade in that direction. They give us clues as to potential breakouts for the pair, whether they're deeply contracting or very looking very abnormally tight. And the other part is they give us potential buy and sell signals when they are relatively horizontal consistent because they're containing the relative highs and the lows. If they're relatively horizontal and they line up with previous support and resistance levels, then they offer us even further entry and exit points or clear signals there. So that's it for our lesson here on Bollinger Bands. My name is Chris Capri with Second Skies. If you'd like to find out more information about our services, feel free to visit us at 2ndskies.com.